Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. All the source code for each video tutorial is located on my website at javacjava.com. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. This tutorial is on the logical operator and this is called XOR or the caret symbol there. Okay, And let's go ahead and open up my website here, javacjava.com. I'm going to go ahead and click on the begin button scroll down to the logical operator then with the caret which is the XOR so the logical operator XOR right tutorial is what this is so in Java the caret the XOR logical operator compares two or more conditional expressions and returns true if exactly one of the conditional expressions evaluates to true so the XOR is also a bitwise operator, but this tutorial will not cover that functionality. Um, i just let you know I rarely use this operator, but there was this one circumstance a long time ago where I was using it and a funny thing popped into my head. The way this operator functions reminded me of the old Duck Duck Goose game I played as a kid. I know, it's really corny, but you know, there can be only one goose and any number of ducks. When the goose is named, the kids start to run. Now, just like that silly game, there can be only one true evaluation and any number of false evaluations. As long as exactly one conditional expression evaluates to true, the code block will run. So that's, I kind of remember the XOR operator, the caret symbol there is the duck duck goose operator, but that's just, just in the back of my mind. So let's go into some, I got, I called them the, in this example, we're going to use the print line method and we're going to just play around this a little bit. So here we've got this conditional expression. Is 5 equal to 5? That's true. XOR, right? And um, is 5 equal to 6? That's false. So we have exactly one conditional expression that's equal to true, so the entire outcome is going to be true. It's going to display true. Is 5 equal to 5? XOR. Is 6 equal to 6? Both are true. So we don't have just one, so it's going to return false. Okay, or display false. Is four equal to five? That's false. Is five equal to six? That's false. So this is going to display false. We don't have that one true outcome. So is five equal to five? That's true right here, right? Um, X or five equal to six false, six equal to seven false, seven equal to eight false. So this is going to display true because we have exactly one um, true evaluation on that conditional expression there. So let's check out this next example here. Is five equal to six? That's false. Six equal to seven false. Seven equal to seven, that's true. Is seven equal to eight? That's false. Where once again, we're gonna get true here. It doesn't matter where that true expression is, is located, and, you know, if you're doing multiple XOR um, operations there, logical operations. So basically, it will evaluate every single um, one of these evaluations here. It won't ever short circuit anything out, so. And let's go on to this next one here. So is five equal to five? That's true, that's true. That's false, that's false, so we're going to come up with false. Okay, so that's that's how it works. So I'm just going to nail this one into your head there as far as you can just have one conditional expression evaluate to true. Let's go ahead and come down here, highlight uh, highlight my code, hit control or control C to copy, and, or you can right click on select copy and you can see I've even made up a, some funny duck duck goose stuff down here. Let's go ahead and move this off screen here and go to start, search, type in CMD. If you're running Windows 7 or earlier, you can go to start run, type in CMD. Um, type in Java C. If you're just coming into my tutorials and you, and you don't see all this stuff scroll through and you see Java C gives you an error message, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit because you'll need that to be installed and configured properly in order for these to work. Let's type in CLS to clear the screen. CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory moves us and the backslash indicates to the root. Um, make dir md, that's what that's short for, make directory, Java. I already have it, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. We'll change directories to Java. And we're gonna make a directory called XOR 
and let's go ahead and change to our XOR folder and let's notepad a class called XOR.java. Okay, um, one of the things you learned in my naming convention thing is that basically when you're doing a class name, the first letter of the class should always be uppercase and the other one's lowercase. Well, I just chose this to do this with all the one in uppercase there. I'm not following the convention there just because XOR is kind of like a, you know, X is actually short for exclusive and then OR. So I just, since it's kind of a, you know, just an abbreviation, I chose to put it all in uppercase, but, you know, normally you wouldn't do that. So... Um, kind of breaking the breaking the norm there, but just uh, don't don't tell anybody. <laughs> and so we got our, our main method entry point here, and exactly what we had talked about up there, I've got just printed out down here. Now, so we'll we'll run that in a second here. And I've also got initializing a duck um, variable, a boolean data type to false, and a goose variable initializing that to true so in like when i was doing the duck duck goose analogy you can think of it as like uh, uh false false true you know so the ducks are the falses and the goose is the true because there can only be one goose so if duck x or duck x or duck x or duck did three did three ducks run hmm i don't know will this run so if duck x or duck x or Goose, duck duck goose ran. So we definitely should see this one print out right here. We shouldn't see this one print out. If uh, duck x or goose x or goose, well, this shouldn't print out either because you can't have two geese in this game. So um, got that saved out. Let's go ahead and clear our screen off. Type in Java C x or dot Java. Go ahead and compile this. And let's go ahead and invoke the XOR class definition. And so up here we got exactly what we're expecting. We should have seen true, false, false, true, true, false. And we've got true, false, false, true, true, false. So that, uh, that worked out exactly like what we're expecting here. And as you can see, the uh, duck, duck, goose was the only one that ran right here. Um, or the only one that... Uh, yeah, ran. I'm just using that for the analogy. You get it. So let's go ahead and move this oh, back over here. Let's close out of that. Close out of that. Um, well, the final thoughts here. There's there's really not much to learn when it comes to the XOR logical operator. Uh, just remember, you can have one and only one true evaluation result for the entire outcome to return true. So um, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.